Love podcasts, hate nonsense. It's the Politics Joe podcast, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> For the listener, he was sitting doing her makeup. That's the context of which we're. It's ASMR, isn't it? We should get into that. <laughs> ASMR. <laughs> Money in that, I it? think there is money in that. Can you have a go at some? <laughs> Lee Anderson has defected to reform. <laughs> I don't think I've ever listened to ASMR. Are we in the third age of Ed Campbell? Because we've we've had sixteen year old skater boy, <laughs> forty year old virgin, uh-huh. and this is like P.S. I love you, Ed Campbell. I don't know. P.S. I love you. Yeah. He has like chunky nits in that, doesn't he? I actually don't know. I don't think I've ever seen it. <laughs> don't look at me, pal. That's all you. <laughs> <laughs> <That> was... <laughs> you looked at me like. Come on, come on woman. <laughs> no, no, he didn't. He looked at me like, come on, you say, you pretend you said it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is that. New jumper? Yes. For a charity shop, which I'm delighted by. I know. Oh, fucking get over yourself. What? Why is that? Why do you have to say that? Because I'm delighted. Right. He was shopping with his girlfriend, you know. Well, she's got a girlfriend. He was shopping with his mum. We've never met her. Shopping with his mum. She bought it. <laughs> Why is that insulting? Ed Campbell's mum still buys his pants. Mm. At least mine talks to me. What? At least mine talks to me. At least you're what? <laughs> oh, mine talks to me. That's good, that. Mm-hmm. Was that? It was a joke about my dead mother, yeah. <laughs> no, she's not. <laughs> You tried that sale and it didn't go well. Because she's alive. That's the main reason. Only reason it didn't work. They're very effective otherwise. <laughs> yeah. Full proof. You ever been to a medium? Yeah. Did it work? <laughs> yeah. Was not to it? not to summon someone. To so. summon <laughs> someone? <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> no, no, no. To go and talk to, you know, a couple of people. Who did you speak to? Um, I spoke to my dead uncle. How was he? Yeah, he was alright. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Good to hear. He was terrible. <laughs> He's dead. Yeah, he was having a bad time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was doing stairs. <laughs> no, we go to them quite a lot. Maybe like, I'd say bi-monthly. You go, go to, to a medium. <laughs> <laughs> we, bi-monthly? <laughs> talking about it. <laughs> we, re- we record it, actually. <laughs> All of it. I'm not joking. <laughs> you go have you, have bi-monthly? You vi- have you got video of it? Um... Yeah, but I mean, it's quite like, it's stuff like... It's personal. Yeah, it's quite personal. Would you show it to us when the cameras weren't rolling? Um, I would happily g- choose a piece and then show it to you. But I'm not just going to start playing it. Ed, tell me about... <laughs> some- <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's so often. I'm actually going tomorrow. <laughs> you know what we were saying about... Remember when I was talking about um, masseuses and how they always say, oh, you need to get a massage all the time. And mm-hmm. you're saying that, well, they're just saying that because they're masseuses. That medium said to your family, you should come here a lot. <laughs> We should come here, though. Mm. And we do. Yeah. She's mad, though. She... No. Oh. <laughs> Immediate. No, she's clever. She... <laughs> she tells me all sorts. She gets it right every time. Ed, uh, do you do anything insane every two months? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Very good. I don't think. No. Very sensible. <laughs> Sleeps from... on the other side of the bed. <laughs> Sleep with my head towards the door. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, go across the bridge I own. What? Yeah, I've got a bridge to sell you. Ah, uh, it's very good. What about you, Ollie? No. It's good lore that. Mm. For the audience. Terrible. Listen, all of this. Yeah, it is. It's appalling. How are you, Ed? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Great. Ava? Great. Oh, they got kettled at the weekend. I did. I got, no. a, good, got a good old kettling, yeah. Where? Leaving the den. Did, oh, right. Yeah. yeah. They they kettled us all the way from South Bermondsey to Canada Water. It's quite a long way, that. Via a circ- circular route, basically through all of, you know, that the sort of the rather high kind of housing estate type mm-hmm. bit. A couple of people got to go home. <laughs> <laughs> um, and everyone, it's like 20-storey council flats. And everyone's just like hanging out their balconies filming you. 
and then why all the because the, we're being <laughs> rolling you flare out your arms. Well, yeah. <laughs> being rolling kettled by the police yeah, yeah. That's so annoying. It's obviously not typical Saturday fair for the people that live there, so I imagine that's why they're filming it. They did, they've done it to us before there, um, but my family were on the Everton side and I was not. In a, so you got to go home nice and easy. Well, I sat in the pub, I put, like pretty much on my own for about three hours until mm. they were done. They yeah. do it for ages. It took about an hour and a half, yeah, it was a piss take. Really? Mm. Yeah. But slightly leavened by the Birmingham fans calling every single person who was filming us a nonce. <laughs> <laughs> they, they prefer it to be under 18 50 year old man you fucking nonce <laughs> you don't know what that means mate. 13 year old kid <laughs> nonce yeah. I, I was at QPR on Saturday sitting quite close to the Middlesbrough fans and someone in the Middlesbrough, in Middlesbrough end had caught the attention of a QPR fan and had got honestly in cash about £200 in cash and was like, like sniffing it like rubbing it over his face and then he pointed I was like, like as if you were the guy pointed <laughs> And then pretended to wipe his arse <laughs> with the wad of cash. <laughs> and I just didn't know what it meant. What does it mean? Uh, that, well, in a psychic reading, that would mean uh, <laughs> good fortune and prosper. <laughs> That's good luck in some companies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's trying to tell the other guy he's poor, right? That's what he's trying to do. Yeah, but he's like, I wipe my ass with money. But you're doing that to a London club and you're from the north of England. Should be the other way around. Oh, that was very. Uh, someone's been in London for a couple of years, haven't Mid- they? <laughs> Middlesbrough fans are actually all very poor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're in the west. You're in West London, calling someone poor, and you're from the north of England. <laughs> Absolutely not. Mm. Should we talk about some politics? Maybe. Uh, I don't know. I, you and I, mm. pop, solo pod, mm. wall to wall budget analysis. Yeah, I know. Yeah, like proper. Yeah. Heavy hitting. Mm-hmm. He's back. Comes up with his fancy jumpers. <laughs> his fancy jumpers. And his highfalutin ideas. <laughs> yeah. I like... It was much more politics on... Do you know what it is, actually? I've, I was thinking about why we did so, such little politics on the mo- last Monday's episode. When... Is it because you were here? <laughs> when there is important stuff to talk about, we talk about it. Mm. When the news is a bit meh. There's so go much going on today, and yes, we're sitting here talking so about your fanny to, we jumper. We will get to that part. You call it a fanny jumper? <laughs> you, you call it a fanny jumper? That's good. That's really good. <laughs> fanny jumper. <laughs> pure, that jumper is pure fanny. <laughs> fanny magnet jumper. No, 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 <laughs> yes, no, no. Yes. That's historical revisionism. <laughs> <laughs> fanny magnet jumper. <laughs> That's why the person gave it to the charity shop. They had too many girls. They had to sell it. That you had to buy it. They had to sell it to you. <laughs> Fanny Rapella. Everyone's <laughs> been returning it. That's why it was there. <laughs> Someone walking through a crowd, a ten-meter barrier around them. I'm gonna ask my psychic about it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, not much in the news then. No, not last Monday, but there's obviously tons today. I've already talked about it when I was doing my ASMR. Oh, yeah. Would you continue? Yes. Do could you want something to tap on? Yeah, could you set up Could you set up the story, please? Ed, what's been happening? Slower. <laughs> Lee oh, <yeah. laughs> Anderson has defected. I think op- open and close it too. To... It's going to... Oh, there's hardly anything in that. Have you seen the TikToks of that Russian bird who like opens car doors and goes like Mercedes? Yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah. This is what this reminds me of. The Anderson has defected to Mercedes reform. Should we talk about that? Yeah. So uh, in this analogy, is the Conservative Party the Rolls Royce of political parties? And is reform the Mercedes of political parties? Yes. No. One's a cut and shut. The other is a... Right, you're both taking the piss now. What? We're going to talk about this normally. We're talking about it right now. No, are. you're not. You're sitting there going, one's a Mercedes. <laughs> one's, a, <laughs> one's a Bugle. <laughs> a Bugle? <laughs> Shut up. One's a Fiat Panda. One's an Audi Quattro. Ed, would you say that Lee Anderson is more spiritually aligned with Middlesbrough or QPR? Because <laughs> um, he, he lives in the real world, famously. Mm, yes. Middlesbrough, real world. Shepherd's Bush, not real world. Everyone knows that. 
Shepherd's Bush is more a kind of state of mind than a than a place. I would say. I think so. It doesn't exist. <laughs> then I should go to the game. I sat <laughs> and spoke to Ava's medium for a bit. I'm going there in a couple of weeks, actually. The medium. Yes, <laughs> Loftus Road. <laughs> yeah. Um. Ava was at the press conference. Just for fun. No, don't don't give her that. We're not gonna, we're not, <laughs> okay. we're not gonna talk about it. I mean, I have to leave here in 19 minutes. I know, I know you and do. so we don't have to talk about it at all. I think we should, listeners. No, no, don't worry about it. He's the editor. He's made a call here. <laughs> <laughs> He's made his bed. He'll lie in it. Mm. Do you think Lee Anderson would wear that jumper? No, what the fuck, Ollie? Because <laughs> he lives in the, in the like real world. Like you said, <laughs> oh. I am the editor. <laughs> He doesn't need any other clothes to make him seem like a fanny. Are you calling Leanne? I think that's probably like a... That's pretty... Can we talk about the fucking politics of it now? Yes. The floor is yours. No, fuck you. <laughs> Engage properly. <laughs> Start us Just because he's here. Yeah. Doesn't mean you have to play up. I haven't up. done anything. Lads, club, lads, club, lads, club. I've not done anything. No, I know, but he's playing up to you. It's pathetic. <laughs> Who's a fanny? Call out. Lee Anderson. Yay! <laughs> Everyone in Westminster man has time, my hair at the time. moment, by the way. I'm just saying, it's actually so embarrassing. Walking in there, I was like, wow, you've all dyed your hair my colour. Exactly the same. I can't help it. People are inside me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, should we discuss politics properly? Anyway, <laughs> anyway that's my bugbear. <laughs> I was talking about it with Sean earlier, and Sean was like... Pfft. So it's quite similar, isn't it? <laughs> no interest. I was like, look, I just got my fucking hair. So just to be clear, <laughs> when you said let's talk about politics, you wanted to bitch about your <laughs> your fellow female colleagues, not three days after International Women's Day, for the crime of having hair. Copying my hair. Yeah, it's, it's pretty standard though, isn't it? Trend setting. You're That's the first person in the world to have that hair colour, of course. Do people go into the barber shop and say, can I have a Santina, please? I think they do, actually. They show a picture of me. They say that Ofcom has declared her shaggable. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your line? I want a piece of that. <laughs> <laughs> now that everyone's uncomfortable, we can talk about the politics. <laughs> that was a good, good strategy from there, actually, wasn't it? Yeah, I, put, I, I enjoyed that. Mm. Where have you been this morning? Oh, thank you. Um, so Lee Anderson, mm. who used to be in the Labour Party six years ago yep. and was in the, the Conservative Party until a couple of weeks ago, yep. um, is now in the Reform Party with Richard Tice. And you're overjoyed about that news. Who Great you news might, for you guys. You can't keep doing this. <laughs> <laughs> keep going. <laughs> um, what happened well, at the press conference you were at this morning? I don't think you care. I, I do. Care. I care a lot. Even if Ollie doesn't care, I do care. Thanks, Ed. Crawl out. Crawl. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so he, so he used to, I don't know, he used to call Richard Tice a pound shop, Nigel Farage, and mm. now he's okay with that, and he's in the party. Um, he also said that voting for reform would just put a Labour government in power. Yes, he did. He said that on GB News as but well, But in I his think. defence, he did actually confront that today. Oh. Yeah. And what w was explained to the journalists was if you vote conservative, mm. you get Labour. If you vote reform, you get reform. And now if you look at the projected seats, there are no seats projected. Mm -hmm. So I think if you vote reform, you don't get anything. I actually came in here really re ready to analyse and you two have really put me off. <laughs> Why don't you do today without me? I wouldn't like that. No. You were going to say yes. No, no, I wasn't. No, no. <laughs> he went like this. <laughs> Ollie was about to do a bit, and I reject. I rejected it. Bit offered, bit rejected. <laughs> Sincerity, mm. engaged. Um, it was a really. I, I I found it. Um, I thought it was really interesting because when he is within the Conservative Party or when he's within the confines of it, he's actually a really interesting actor or a really interesting piece porn right because he's the quote-unquote attack dog he says the things that central government are too afraid to say um 
when he's on his own, he's got absolutely nothing. Mm. He's got nothing to offer. He was standing in front of this room of people and it was almost like the George Galloway by-election again. He was just <coughs> talking about how, but you know, on the other end of the spectrum, he was talking about how we've allowed a small minority to take over. Um, it's not safe to go into central London anymore. Protests should be banned altogether. And then he had nothing else. Nothing mm. else. So he's basically gone to reform on a one policy, on a one mandate, which is to ban You're allowed to say protests. Sadiq Khan's a... To say, yeah, he also said he would list. refuse to apologise to Sadiq Khan. It's also because those kind of headbanger policies are standard fare for reform. Like that's just, those are just amongst the slate of other things that they've said. <clears throat> they don't stand out within like, a professional Conservative Party. Mm. Excuse me, no, they do stand out there, but within the, within the gamut of what Reform announced and are proposing to campaign on, it's, it, it's not new. I also saw that um, Lee Anderson had previously voted for a recall motion stating that when MPs cross the floor of the House that there should be a, yes. a by-election. So when's the, when's the by-election happening? <laughs> well, no, he, he explained this. He said there wouldn't be, it wouldn't be right for him to call a by-election because there's going to be a general election in May. So it makes right. sense for him to just carry on now as a reform MP <laughs> and um, <laughs> stop asking him follow-up questions. He's, he, his demeanour in that press conference, he was furious. He called Harry Cole a pound shop Glen Owen. He did. But in his defence, that was in retort to Harry Cole going, are you really a pound shop Nigel Farage? And actually, that was quite funny, tete-a-tete, -tete, you might say. Mm. There, was a, there was a good bit where he... he it, he heard someone laughing in the room and went, who's laughing? Yeah. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. He's so sensitive. And like, did he, used to, be a, did he used to be a teacher? I have no idea. That feels very much supply teacher. Is it because teacher. he looks like that comedian who used to be a teacher? Greg, Greg Davis. Davis. <laughs> Does he? He's just white, isn't he? He's just an old white man. Yeah. Greg Davis is about six foot ten. How tall is Lee? Uh, I, I'm going to go with 5'11". Is that it? I would say so. What do you reckon, Sean? Yeah, but you would, wouldn't you? <laughs> Sean described himself as six foot five. <laughs> Richard Tice described him as the champion of the Red Wall. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Down from Ashfield. <laughs> <laughs> he enters, <laughs> dressed up as a knight <laughs> with a lance. Draw the square circle. <laughs> he will stand up against the con socialist twins. <laughs> I actually thought con socialist was one of the funniest things I've ever heard. Stormageddon gets me every time. Every time he says Stormageddon, <laughs> it's so ludicrous. And you can't in good faith, no one is serious. Seriously worried about a Starmageddon. Yeah. I actually, I asked Lee Anderson a question and he told me to go and read the website. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. And I was like, all right, no worries, so, pal. So, <laughs> oh, you, you got a website? <laughs> that is a serious political operation. Yeah. You know they've got a website because when I walked into the office earlier from lunch, the Reform it. logo was just across your entire laptop <laughs> screen. It was sick. They've got, it's called, they're calling it a contract. It's not a normal manifesto. Ma it's not a normal manifesto. It's a contract it's they have with voters. Because they're a business, not a political party. They don't have manifestos. That's true. They just do contracts. They just do contracts. Yeah. And it's a contract with the voters. And they have things that they're going to do within the first hundred days, which are... Um, uh, you, print, you got a printout? Yeah, yeah, there's tons. It's sick. It's, you, presumably, you know all this stuff. Do you want to test me? <laughs> <laughs> they're going to... Raise the threshold from 12,500 to 20,000. They, they talk about that a lot. <laughs> Save five pounds in every hundred pounds. Mm. We make these savings in business and at home. <laughs> That's like, do you ever see those? Do you ever see those Instagram reels where it'll be like a guy, usually in a pair of glasses with like a MacBook, and he'll be like, "You need to improve your household budgeting. Yeah. Set aside five pounds every month." The public sector must be no exception. Every manager across government must find savings within without touching frontline services. So you're cutting five percent of public spending. You're like no frontline services though. Don't worry. Why haven't they thought of doing that? <clears throat> That's genius. I actually... In That's blue sky thinking. Yeah. I quite like their policy about, like, fracking. Well, bring it, well, introducing it. So they have this concept that there's, like, a shitload of gold <coughs> like, <laughs> underneath. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, like a gold rush. <laughs> I'm going to engineer a gold rush. <laughs> 
uh, oil and shale gas that's just underneath the country. <laughs> Prospectors <laughs> from like the 19th century World West. And they basically just say like, it's all there, we just haven't drilled for it. They are a f- like a faction from fucking Game of Thrones it's so or June. It's like, ah uh, yes, the reformists believe that the gold <laughs> is beneath our feet and you must only defeat the champion of the Red Wall to access As it. As we take on the consocialist barons, <laughs> <laughs> only then will the emperor, the emperor has handed spice in production yeah. <laughs> to the consocialists. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they yeah. need to abolish the grief tax. What do we think the grief tax is? Oh, I would say that's probably the... They wanted to ban... Not ban children's funerals. The, the state would pay for children's funerals. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> that was a policy. <laughs> it's, no, it's abolishing um, inheritance tax for all estates under £2 million. I, I'm back, I back that. <sighs> And then we the rate Why? above two million pounds will be twenty percent tax with the option to donate to charity instead. <laughs> <coughs> it might have been a Brexit party policy about the children's thing, because I remember Caroline Flint from Labour backed it. Right. There was what, why do you oppose inheritance tax? <laughs> I don't. She I don't know. Right. I, I'm Loaded. just a bit. I'm a bit lost, to be honest. I thought we were going to come in here talk about reform. We're talking we're about, about reform. reform. It's a fucking manifesto. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to uh, ban transgender ideology in primary and secondary schools. This is within a hundred days. Of, yeah, well, that's, of, that's, of, that's, that's day one, bro. <laughs> transgender ideology banned. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, that's gone now. <laughs> oh, that's screwed now. It was all a figment of your imagination, you fucking losers. It's gone now. <laughs> sorry, I, I bet you can't teach maths now. <laughs> Too bad. They also want to get rid of um, critical race theory. Same again, day one in primary. <laughs> Job done. Schools. Bang. Um, it's just a figment. Affirm British sovereignty by rejecting the influence of the World Economic Forum. Are you familiar? <laughs> Are you familiar with firm British sovereignty? Firm. Or is it just a semi? <laughs> Very good. Are you being droll? No. No. <laughs> okay, I don't think so. Well, no. What was the thing about firm British sovereignty? Affirm. Ah. I think. <laughs> yeah, you can do that day one. <laughs> By rejecting the influence. Mm. Affirming British sovereignty is just, you give a press conference and you say, no, Britain's the best. You also need to cancel your membership of the World Health Organization. Unless there's fundamental reform to its structure and funding. Reform UK also opposes the creation of a central bank digital currency. We will legislate if necessary to stop Britain becoming a cashless society. Oh yeah, that's, a, yeah. Stop, <laughs> sorry, this is great. Propose a comprehensive free speech bill legislate to stop left-wing bias and woke ideology. So you're legislating against some speech. Uh, no more debanking, no more cancel culture, left-wing hate mobs or political bias in public institutions. Stop Sharia law being used in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know what you're, these are your guys. <laughs> no, my guys, cringing? can you stop this? Because people actually reply to the podcast and say things like she loves reform. <laughs> I also talk about labour a lot and... <laughs> Let me tell you. In much, in much less favourable terms, to be fair. <laughs> um, launch a Westminster anti-corruption unit. Uh, commence reform of the BBC. The out-of-touch, wasteful BBC is institutionally biased. The TV licence is taxation without representation. In a world of on-demand But TV, so is VAT, really. People should be free to choose. Unless it's their gender. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's opting into Sharia law. <laughs> you can't choose that. <laughs> You're not allowed to choose that one. Uh, There's a guy who called me up at LBC this weekend. He said, Ollie, why have you said nothing about the 200 Sharia courts that are operating in Britain? Why haven't you said anything about it? <laughs> not fucking you real. should say something about that. <laughs> you should say something about that. I challenge you. Yeah. <laughs> Denounce the Sharia law court. <laughs> Do you condemn? Are you frightened about big Sharia? <laughs> <laughs> I do not condemn the Sharia courts. No? No. The reason I've said nothing about them is because that I do a lot of side hustle litigation. <laughs> <laughs> You're a Sharia lawyer. Yes. Do you remember when someone said to you that it gets to a point where the left turns into jihad? Yes, I do remember that, yeah. Us at the Sharia court. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On the jury. Uh, sat front <laughs> row jury of, the Shari- of the Shariah jury, being like, oh, it was inevitable that we would end up there. <laughs> Chop his fucking hand off. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're we'll have it, it turns out. 
this is a big a big front for big Saudi. Uh, if you could impose hand chopping as a legal punishment for something, what do you think it should be the punishment for? Beeping. Beeping your horn. At all? Unless you're in an emergency. <laughs> okay. Is there a penalty for that already? Who enforces it, Ed? Well, that's the thing for like the Sharia court. <laughs> <laughs> they will enforce it. I think what should happen is if that you beep your horn once unnecessarily. For each time you do it, you get a wheel taken off. <laughs> <laughs> so you give them reliant rollings for like after the first offence. Yeah. And then a motorbike for the second. And then a unicycle. No, 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 no. That you just take one wheel off and you've got to drive the car with three wheels, <laughs> and then um. And that would make traffic safer. Well, it would stop you honking. But then everyone else is honking because you're even, like, veering off the road. No, because if you are honking... Honk! <laughs> it turn that was into, more of a goose. It would turn into, like, people making verbal noises. Or they, people would use things other than their horn. Fine. They'd have, like, klaxons. Fine. That's not fine. I, um... Honk! I get... To, I, I think about it sometimes when I'm sitting in my flat and someone's hooting and hollering outside. Mm. It's a place where there's a lot of traffic and yeah. sometimes people just like to sit there and hold on to their horn for 60 seconds. We should do a lot. We should, we should, I think we should cut down on noise pollution yeah. outside people's homes. We should close the pubs. No, no, no. The pubs can make all the noise they want. It's the hooting. They shouldn't be drink driving, really. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> the... <laughs> the pub is not a drive through someone, someone should invent that because that'd be fucking sick. A drive through pub. That. Yeah. We had that during lockdown. Drive through pubs? Yeah. Did we? Um, you Wouldn't could drive up. If I was you. No, because you could drive up and you could get it in your milk cartons, couldn't you? And then take the milk cartons home. Full of beer. I think that's such a grim thing to do. I did it all I the did time. It, I did it tons, yeah. Really? Yeah. We got a keg, it's actually, as well. Beer. It's a sign of how low I was that sitting on a curb with, you know, one of those two litre milk <clears throat> plastic boys yeah, yeah. washed out with lager in it. And I was like, this is the fucking life. Why did you think that was low? Uh, that was some of the most fun I've ever had. That's terrible. That's Sitting outside the Lyric in it's Soho. Terrible. Drinking beer from a hatch that came in milk bottles. I loved it. I loved every second of it. Of lockdown? Of that bit, yeah. You also were working in central London. So that was Yeah, it was, yeah. But you weren't, you couldn't piss, obviously. So you would drink quite obviously. a bit of beer. And I've got... <laughs> of <laughs> course, you yeah. couldn't go inside. You couldn't piss. And cut off your piss. Um... <laughs> They, you know, you couldn't go inside to use the inside of the pub. That's why you're getting it through hatches. I, and think, so, I think my point is... Oh, I was about to talk about pissing in Soho, but carry on. <laughs> no, I don't that, think actually, the listen- that is the kind of talk I will encourage, Ava. So please. No, look, I'm just saying, you know, if you're a young woman, you've had four pints and you've got three kidneys, you've got to piss somewhere. Did, did the audience know that about you? <laughs> what? You had three kidneys? Oh, right. I thought you meant the pissing outside thing. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have three kidneys? Yeah. Do you have one big one and two wee ones? Or three medium Sorry. sized? Because <laughs> we, we. <laughs> oh, very good. She's got three great honking big kidneys. Pent <laughs> 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 double. Because you get two on one side. <laughs> One's called a floating kidney. Ooh. Mm. That doesn't sound good. She's fine. Where's she functions. It, it functions? Is it, yeah. pl- is it plumbed in? Yeah, she's plumbed in, yeah. It's connected. That's mental. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How'd you find that out? Uh, <laughs> When I was, well, I don't know, when I was a kid. You're like, I clearly have something. <laughs> You're that in your body. It's like a kidney hanging off a face. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's going to go somewhere. <coughs> no, I think they found it because I had um, a hole in my heart or something like that. And so I think they were looking wow. at other things and they were like, oh, so many organs in here. <laughs> Do you want to- I think my point, no. I think my point was <laughs> <laughs> that whilst I enjoyed the beer at the time, mm. I, I don't do that by choice now. Do you know, do you know what I mean? Like yeah, I, I, no, don't go, I never go to somewhere, get a pint and sit. No, but I do have a pint. Right. But, nice but now that. you sit it's on not, the bench rather in, than... It's not in your fucking horrible milk carton. Yeah. They wash the milk carton now, Ed. And the toilets are open. They like, take it off the music. other. You don't need to piss outside. And a vibe. You don't need to order a scotch egg. You didn't have to order a scotch egg at that point. No, but that was a horrible part of the year. Do you know what um, reform wants to do with postal voting? I'm g- guess they've got a problem with it. Stop. <laughs> postal voting has allowed ele- electoral fraud. We will stop postal voting except for the elderly, disabled, or those who can't leave their homes. Oh, so it's an <laughs> ethnic thing. <laughs> Is it? 
Yeah, that's what it, that's dog whistle. Yeah, for sure. Can okay. you say it again? What were the t- conditions of it? Uh, we will stop postal voting except for the elderly, disabled, or those who can't leave their homes. Old people can be not white too. Elderly, disabled, and those who can't leave their homes. It's a, who it, else is you, using postal voting? But no, this, this, this is the thing. I've done it before as well. It's the thing for um, that they always get. They always go mad about it in Tower Hamlet because oh. they're like those bloody Muslims all voting my like postal vote. <coughs> That's why we keep losing. It's nonsense. Um, they want to com- commence reform of the civil service by replacing civil service leaders with private sector successful people. That's the phrase they've used. What? <laughs> private sector successful people who are political appointees who come and go with the government. Enforce the civil service code of integrity, honesty, objectivity and impartiality. Ensure better value for money with proper competitive tendering. Can I just ask, can I pose a question? Mm-hmm. Did Kate Middleton go missing... Cover to cover up for Lee Anderson defecting to reform? Mm-hmm. Or did Lee Anderson defect to reform <coughs> to cover up Kate? Lee Anderson was... Th- he hadn't even made the top four on the BBC News website when I checked it this morning. They were leading with Kate. Yeah? He, he, he always says he's a country constituency party. So he obviously loves the Princess of Wales. So he's he's like, country constituency party? Yeah. Okay. Well, I didn't hear anything about Queen there. Mm. So... What's that like? You do, know, do you what's think, that about? Do you think she's dead? Kate Middleton? Yeah. No, no she's just divorced, isn't she? Someone made the point. I said, uh, I said as a joke, and that is not <laughs> like me saying definitively. <laughs> um, she's been practicing in Photoshop. She's clearly, she's, she's at like University of Arts doing a Photoshop course. Do you believe that Kate Middleton has ever opened Photoshop in her life? I think, yeah, I think there is a non-zero chance that she has. Oh, she's got nothing fucking better to do. She's just oh, I don't, well, she's at like uni. La la la. I don't know. If she was the fashion show at uni, so you might she might have designed the poster, perhaps. Okay, yeah, I believe that. Yeah, those are the two things I know about Kate Middleton. She's now a royal, and she was in the fashion show at St Andrews University. You know that about her. That's that's true, is it? Yeah, that's where that's the, the story about where that's where William first saw her in a fashion show. Yeah, do you yeah. not know this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. she was wearing like a see-through dress. Okay, like sheer. Sheer, yeah. Yeah, Florence Pugh was wearing something sheer at the Oscars. I don't know if you saw that. I haven't yet. I no, yeah. You, so. Nip out on the red carpet. <laughs> <laughs> that was you last night. <laughs> God, Sydney Sweeney last week. Florence no. Pugh this week. No, I was actually quite surprised. I was, Saturday I was, is for the boys. I think it was a. Sky, I think it might have been like a Sky News Instagram carousel. It was like, here's everyone at the Oscars, and I was going through it, Florence Pugh. and then Pugh's just fucking whoops her out. <laughs> whoops. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like. I think Lee Anderson would say whoops. <laughs> no, he wouldn't. The lovely whoobies. He would. He would respectfully call them her breasts. <laughs> no, like a. If you're trying to be sexy. No, I think he's like a bust. I think he'd say it's bust. Like bust. Yeah. Bust. Let bust. Me have yeah. a go on your bust. Is that your impression of him? Ish. Go on. Yeah. Keep going. I live in the real world. <laughs> in a place called Ashfield. <laughs> We're, we're inexplicably. My, my, my culture is not your comedy, yeah? Can you, you don't live just, in the real world. You live in, in fucking... Loftus Road. Camden. <laughs> Can't live a dog's Ollie like that. Ollie <laughs> lives at Camden Market <laughs> mm. every Saturday. Yeah, he does, yeah. Ollie's pitched up Camden, Camden Market. Says it's the heart and soul of London. He wears one of those um, like rug jacket jumper things <laughs> and Charged. has like a bit of incense all the time burning. Charge tourists a quid to take a photo with and me. Then he yep. comes out and he go like on a weekend. He's like, hi guys, how are we? <laughs> <laughs> Has Lee Anderson ever been to Camden? <laughs> Potentially. I think no. No. I think the concept of Camden, Camden is unsettling for him. Because <laughs> it's just London. Yeah. It's not real. It's not the, we're not here to do things with you lot. Anything we inside, all live in the real world. Anything inside the M25 is not real. Not real. It's Nothing. just a figment of his imagination. But I think he lives in, I think he stays at County Hall. What's County Hall? County Hall is the building that's opposite on the other side of the river from Parliament. And it's where a lot of the MPs who don't live near London stay. It's right. basically like student halls, but for MPs. Um, am I doxing? Is that doxing someone? Probably. Is it? Yeah. No, but they all, it's quite well known that they all do that. Right. Anyway, so he's 5'5". Five five. <laughs> um, this is his exact flat and phone number. 
But what I meant was, is that, so when he comes to London, he probably li- he probably does actually stay within a two hundred meter radius. How much do you think they paid him to go to reform? Yeah. Do you think he would need cash? He was he was without party. He said he said that they'd offered him a lot of money before. Yeah, but this time, do you think he took cash? Do you think? Do you know what? If it was a case of defecting to reform without cash. Or defecting to reform with cash, but then I keep, would take the cash. But then yeah. it, keep, it, keep, it keeps him relevant, it keeps him the news cycle, because now all of a sudden he's now more of a commodity than he was previously to places like GB News. It keeps him. I love the fact that they got scooped on this, by the way. Yeah, what the, what their the own fuck their own they presenter at? defecting across the aisle, and the Telegraph got the story first. Yeah, mm. insane. But GB News did get the first <coughs> question today at the press conference. The right. People's Channel. Yeah. Chopper! <laughs> is that what he said? <laughs> uh, are, yeah, you, are you still trying to do an impression of him? <laughs> no, that was Tice. But oh. I, I said it. You thought that, that was Richard Tice? That was, that was tone wise, was Tice, not accent wise. Oh, no, see, for me, the accent was Richard Tice and the tone was off. That's why I was. My confused. accent was my normal voice. <laughs> so, t- so that's the joke. <laughs> oh, right, very good. Uh, Tice was just. People's Channel! And Lee Anderson was just grumpy. It was like, Chopper, anyway. Hmm. Do we think this will move the needle in any way nope. for reform? I don't think so either. Nope. What do you think, Eva? Well, I mean, they would have an MP in Parliament, so yeah, I do think that would move it slightly. But the what? it's sort of like when Andrew Bridgen went with the Reclaim Party and was in Parliament, right? And <coughs> at the beginning it was like, oh, wow, they've got an MP. That could possibly be interesting. And it wasn't at all. Yeah. Um, as long as he doesn't... The thing is... It, who do you vote with? What motions do you lay down? You're not even entitled to like an opposition day debate. The only thing that you're kind of restricted to is putting down like a private member's bill and hoping that you get a debate granted off the back of it. Maybe a petitions bill or something like that. But what's he going to fight for? The only thing he seems to care about is Islamism and protests. Like, what's he going to do? This house believes that Islam, like, Islamism should be a catch-all term for anyone who's not <laughs> like, looking like me. <laughs> YouGov set polling shows that Brits are three times as likely to have a negative view of Anderson than a positive one, but more than half of people don't know who he is. I think he's due to lose his seat as well, right? Yeah, to Labour. But he could defect to Labour, couldn't he? Defect again! He could go right back where he started. (laughs) I've changed my mind. Yeah. (laughs) That was better. (laughs) That was good. I'm pretty proud of that. You're getting there. I've changed my mind. I love Keir. (laughs) Who's that? (laughs) I don't mind all the Muslims. (laughs) Happy Ramadan, by the way, to anyone Try a laugh for everybody. <laughs> You're saying happy Ramadan to everyone who celebrates? To everyone who's listening, yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> to all of you who celebrate in Ramadan. Yeah. If you wanted to do it, now's the time. Happy Ramadan to everybody. <laughs> um, do you know that, do you know what I always think about is when David Blaine was in the, that glass box? Oh, yeah above London mm. for like 40 was it 40, 40 days. days it was wasn't it and they um, just the chapstick chapstick yeah he had a little did he yeah um, people kept flying McDonald's on little toy helicopters <laughs> around the box yeah <laughs> about that all what, what do you what do you mean I, uh, no, I don't know if you've got, deli- have have you got deliveries he had water and a chapstick did he eat the chapstick <laughs> I think there was some suggestion that the kind of the salt there were salts in it that would keep him alive when he came out of it he looked terrible fucked yeah he looked awful. like my goal summer weight but you know <laughs> <laughs> that's what you do before you go to Ibiza isn't it right I'm just going to tell everyone I've got an eating disorder are we <laughs> sorry <laughs> um, anyway I don't know why that reminded me of that do we think more Tory MPs will go Reform say so. How would, <laughs> which is really, yeah, really funny. They're pre- yeah, they're pretty convinced that a few Tory MPs will join. I th- <laughs> can, um, can the Prime Minister defect? That'd be sick. The, the Griffmobile. He looks, you, he I, don't think, I don't know GPUs. if they would take him. No, he's a consocialist. He's, oh, a, consocialist. Yeah. he's a consocialist twin. Yes, 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 yes. And he's the one who's allowing Starmageddon to happen. Which is everyone's, talk- everyone's talking about Starmageddon all the time. Um, are, are we becoming a reform podcast? No. There was literally There's a reform, two of you now. There was a reform press conference this morning. We were supposed to come in here and talk about it for five minutes. 
Instead, we talked about how you got kettled. We haven't even talked about or posited where the princess might be. We did get... We, t- we did. We, we, we touched on that. that. We've been talking about this bloody press conference for about an hour. Yeah. Well, we were interrupted to talk about Ramadan. And I think that we... Uh, I think we spoke about it in a way that everyone would have, would have, would have liked us to. Um, Do you have nothing? You, I mean, I j- well, look, give me some more Leanderson analysis. Look, it doesn't just, you can't just command it, you know what I mean? <laughs> so what's the problem then? Do look, you want to talk about listen, it or not? Pal, that's fine, but when I get paid to do it somewhere else later, you can't be pissed <laughs> off about it, all right? <laughs> um, Kate Middleton. Right, yeah, sure. Not very good at Photoshop. Mm. Were you convinced by the tweet that she put out? No. That is allegedly from her. That's not from her. Where she said... But it said C. Her name is Kate with a K. Yeah, that could Catherine be... With a C. That could be... She's Princess Catherine no, Wood. No, no, no. The Irish spelling of Prince William. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's Cillian Murphy. <laughs> Cillian. <laughs> He somehow got, he won the Oscar, had a few drinks, somehow managed to hack into the Prince and Princess of Wales Instagram account my or Twitter on, account. My view on this is that you, you can spell cunt with a K, but you can't spell K with a C. All right, what I'm going to say is we've been in trouble before for that joke. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, well, he couldn't, it, it wasn't signed off by William, though, again, was it? And the, the other thing. How did you know that? Wasn't because it wasn't a W. Because it said C. Right. Right. So just try and try and come at this from like an elementary, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go. <laughs> understanding of letters. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Ollie starts with an O. Oh. So 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 hear me out. So so Kate says that she apologises. She was photoshopping it. Yeah. But I thought that it was William who was meant to be taking the photo. Did it say that in the tweet? Did she say that William she, took the photo? She said, as an amateur photographer, I have. She said, oh, right, that's what I thought she said. Yes. Okay. In that photo, both of her hands were around her children. Yes. So she wasn't the amateur photographer no, in that, was I, she? I, I think she is an amateur photographer and she might be married to a different one. No, Don't but what I'm saying is she took the blame Photoshop. for the Photoshop error, but she didn't take the photo. Do you guys genuinely think Kate Middleton wrote that tweet? No. Yeah. Um, yeah, I do. <laughs> From her bunker. <laughs> <laughs> Write it. <laughs> <laughs> her and Shelley Ann Miscavige are <laughs> bunked down together. Who's that? She's the Scientology guy's wife. Ah. She's not been seen in public for 20 years or something. When do you think we will see Kate Middleton next in public? It's going to be like... The next time and Ava has a seance. We all have to... <laughs> I'm going to ask about it tomorrow. We all, we all have to just pretend that that is the same person. Okay. But you know, when I'm like, they replaced that character on Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, which is a completely different actress. We have to pretend that's Kate Middleton. Oh, yeah, like in Family Guy when Meg changed. Um, do you know You know what was a really good showing today of how royal correspondents don't have a real job? Mm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Giles Brandreth, is that his name? Yes. yes. Um, so on Twitter, there was a great joke that was made, which was later this year, ITV will be putting together a nine-part series Kate Middleton, The Lost Princess, mm. starring Sheridan Smith. Giles Brandreth went on this morning and reported it as fact. <laughs> said, we've, got a, we've got a new drama to look forward to with Sheridan Smith. ITV are already all over this. <laughs> Was he not joking? No, no he wasn't. It's very, oh. Also, the presenter is just... But what's, <laughs> what's funny is that when you're, when you're a royal journalist, you, all you have to do is repeat receive... Repeat a press a, release, yeah. Yes, is repeat, look at a photograph and repeat a, a press release. And you couldn't even look at that photograph and go, it's a bit odd that there's eight hands for... <laughs> 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 nine hands for four people here. Mm. A bit questionable, that. What if it was just different, different photos of everyone who looked at it? Because one like of the their yellow sleeves, and gold dress. One of their sleeves is like, is like got a hole in it. Yep. The skirt oh, yeah, is they wouldn't of, do that, would they? Like a straight line. Yeah. Kate Middleton doesn't have any rings on. And a zipper. And has zi- there's like two zippers where there should be one. Mm-hmm. So. She's got two boot openings. Boot. Sounds one like my, shoe. Sounds like my kind of woman. <laughs> mm. Two feet. <laughs> <laughs> 
can, all can, I need. She, can she walk? <laughs> oh, that's very ableist of you, isn't it? Sorry, yeah, it is. It is. Get her to the Sharia court. Let's sort that out. <laughs> Just the one foot. <laughs> for a for a beeping offence. Right. Enjoy the landlords. Mm. Do you need to go? Well, I don't really think there's much point in me being here. <laughs> <laughs> See, for a- are, you, are you happy with what you've done? What have I done? Ava's storming out of the I've podcast. I've read a list of policies. <laughs> That's actually the most politics he's yes. done in years. Mm. 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 It's just you two. Nah. It's you and me. No, it's actually you. I remember when I didn't do the bit. I didn't yes and you. I'd be no buttered. Look what you've done. It was storming off. <laughs> Careful. Careful of the wires. <laughs> do you know any Jerry? Do you want your phone and keys? For what? For what? Doing some work? I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to do the bit that I'm storming out of bed, but it really hasn't carried my <laughs> <laughs> Do it as if you're storming out. Shout. I can't believe Ava left. God. Because of what I said about Shariah Law. We forced her to go and work full time for the reform party. Where are, where are you going? Oh, she's going to do the SNP thing. She's going to go and propose an, an electoral alliance with the SNP and reform. Is she still there? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, some people are trying to record a podcast in here, actually. I was leaving, and I heard to say she's still there. So do something about that. <laughs> Bye. 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 Ava doesn't want to be here whilst we talk about your work. No, it's quite insulting. It's disrespectful, We talk it? about Reform UK all the time. I know. We tolerate that, don't we? Absolutely. So she should tolerate a conversation about Extreme Britain. Damn right. The, hot, the hottest new YouTube series in the world. Do you think? No, not even remotely true. <laughs> <laughs> I think very provably false that. <laughs> it goes hot ones. Yep. Extreme Britain. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Bigger. People are dying to be on it. Do you think Sean Evans would do uh, Extreme Britain with me? No. No, I don't think so either. Who would be your dream hot ones guest? Ooh. Robbie Williams. Sorry. Robbie Williams. On hot ones? Yeah. That'd be sick. The Robbie Williams. Yeah. The, th- <laughs> the singer. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Because <laughs> he's class. <laughs> he's sick. You have become a fanny this episode. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever seen have you ever seen him live at Neighbourhood? I've seen him from the Golden Circle at the Milton Keynes Bowl. I've seen him at Hamden Stadium as well. But at Neighbourhood. Look, I like Robbie as next as the as the I next think man. So interesting. I wouldn't go that far. See you at Neighbourhood in like yeah. two thousand. Yeah. <laughs> there's a great like the live concert video and it's on YouTube and he, he how many times have you watched that like every after every night out I've ever been on <laughs> it's, it's real good like post night out fodder it's really you're, oh, not, you're it's, not joking it's, it's electric you're not it's genuine stop watching this video <laughs> go and watch Robbie Williams live at Nightworth watch the first song let me entertain you and you tell me that's not entertainment that is it's, it is electric what Exactly, shit on. It is the point of the song. But, it, but he... Spoiler, I, just, I, just, it, I just really want to alert spoilers. you. I need to tell you, Ed, right now. The last eight months of doing this podcast, your three years of employment at Joe, yeah. you've been gradually accruing cultural capital <laughs> and you have just spent all of it. Wrong, 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 wrong. You, you wrong. have. I like if, Robbie. I like if, Robbie. Don't get this, me wrong. Listener, if you're, this about, is not good if what you're, you're doing. about to watch it, I'm about to spoil it for you. So go and watch it and come back. There's a bit. It opens... <laughs> He appears and it goes the opening roof, and it cuts to him. Yeah. He's suspended upside down yeah. in like an upside down crucifix thing. Yeah. That's who appears first thing he does on stage. Yeah, insane. There's like two hundred thousand people there screaming, and then in the kind of middle riff bit, he goes, <laughs> "Ladies and gentlemen." My name is Robbie Williams, and for the next two hours, your ass is mine! <laughs> and you can talk about that on Hot Ones. Or on here, on this podcast. It's so good. 
Who do you have, if not Robbie Williams? Look, I like... <laughs> <laughs> I like the music of Robbie Williams. Yeah. What you've just said <laughs> has shocked me to my core. Because <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't think a mind as twisted as that could be as, <coughs> as good a performer. I didn't realise you felt like this about him. Oh, he's sick. He's really good. Do you not agree? Are you doing a bit? Are you doing? <laughs> no, I'm not. You... Erroneously, I think Rob Williams is a class. I'm just reappraising you mentally. Everything I thought I knew about you was different. It's, I think what, once, once you've watched him at Nebworth, you will change your mind. It's like a spiritual awakening. I saw him in the you know in the Netflix doc. I saw the thing you're talking about, right? When he's hung upside down. Sick. I thought Shawnee was pulling up a chair. There. <laughs> <laughs> Who would you have on Hot Ones? Xi Jinping. <laughs> Slightly different. <laughs> Mine's more gettable, I think. Yeah, that's why it's so peculiar. Because I asked you for like your dream guest and you came out with what I think is probably like a B-list celebrity. Wrong. Triple No, just because you think Robbie <laughs> Williams is like God's gift. But again, I reiterate, I, I like Robbie Williams. I'm trying to think who else I, I'm, I'm, the reason I'm going like dictator strong man is because I think it would be funny to watch him fail to eat spicy wings you probably want like Noam Chomsky or something boring <laughs> something you inflict on the audience <laughs> <laughs> would you rather watch a sit in an interview with Neen Robbie Williams or <laughs> Ollie <laughs> someone who's written a book Me and Robbie Williams react to Nebworth <laughs> versus Ollie talking about capitalism. <laughs> I think they'll say capitalism. I don't think they will. <laughs> I reckon we might be able to get Robbie Williams from filtered. That'd be sick. Show him Nebworth. Would that, be the f- that. would that be the first time you expressed an interest in Unfiltered <laughs> yeah. as a project? First, first episode I listened to. <laughs> the Robcast. We, we published a new episode of that today. Right, Nebworth. Yeah. Very exciting. Unfiltered, Exc- yeah. Excited to listen to that. Do you talk about Nebworth and that? No, Ed, we didn't. <laughs> That's a shame. What do you talk about? Uh, we talk about nepotism in football. Mm-hmm. We talk about financial fair play. <laughs> Uh, we talk capitalism. Yeah, capitalism. Yeah, <laughs> um, Sydney Sweeney, um, rudders, <laughs> and whether boobs are back or front. <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> front. Let's get these gone. His head screwed on. Everyone says we're Frank Lampard. He knows what boobs are. <laughs> Speaking of, did you say? Boobs are front or back. You said that. No, no. I, I know I said it, but what's your view on the matter? Oh, front. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Boobs are front. Should we talk about Extreme Britain? Yeah, fine. Excellent. I went to the Landlord Convention. What happened? Um, You've been here three years in a row now. You and I went the first year. Yeah. Me and Harry went last year. And me and Harry went this year. They started doing that thing the Lib Dems do, right? Where they have like a spring conference as well. They have them, they have them all over the country. The, ones, the next one's in Birmingham, if, you're, if you want to attend. The next one's in Birmingham in <laughs> if May. You, if you want to go and pay your landlord an extra 200 quid. <laughs> so your landlord is here. <laughs> he will be in Birmingham. <laughs> Gave him a check. <laughs> a blank check to my landlord. <laughs> it's not a bad idea. Um, you could follow them around the country. I could. Asking them questions. Yeah, yeah. I could. I think by the, they might get wise to it at some point and stop, in, stop engaging. I mean, they, they've done it three times in a row. <laughs> so yeah. far. Yeah, we talked about the cost of living crisis, about the rent reform bill. Do you know what was interesting? No. I don't know, actually know if this is in one of the clips, but anyway, they all talked about the need to build more houses. So they can buy them. And I think that's basically yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they were, they were saying... They were saying um, yeah, there's housing crisis. It's not landlord's fault. It's the government's fault for not building enough houses. Hmm. Okay. Worst guy you know. <laughs> <It> makes great <laughs> point. Yeah, but that kind of that 
that feels to me like uh, like absolving themselves of any responsibility, really. Yeah, but you know the thing is, they're making more dwellings by buying family homes and turning them into seven flats. They, I tell you what, they've fucking served you up a delicious plate of spin, and you've just you've sucked it all down mm -hmm. there, haven't you? I am um, to landlords what Ava is to Reform UK. <laughs> <laughs> We need more HMOs. <laughs> more HMOs. So you can live there with no, without anyone you like. Yes, and, and no living room. Work, consume, die. Yeah. Who said that? Work, consume, die? Yeah. Um, Frankie Boyle. I mean, why, why was he there? It's secret landlord. Really? I don't know. I've made that up. Yeah. Allegedly. It's good. Good. It's good. That you... <laughs> <laughs> legal, legal, legal. <laughs> joke, joke, joke. Parody, parody, parody. Um... Go Do you on, have man. a clip from yeah, okay, yeah, this? From if you haven't watched this, after you finish watching Robbie Williams at Nebworth, go and watch uh, the latest episode of Extreme Britain where I went to the landlord, landlord show because it's uh, which is about to be spoiled now. Clip one. It feels like the whole um, I don't know environment is uh, problematical. So the government seem to be introducing lots of anti-landlord regulation and taxation. Um, and there's lots of pressure groups who seem to think that everything that's wrong with the private rented sector, it's all landlords' faults. And which pressure groups do you mean? Um, charities, um, the likes of Shelter, um, and uh, well, that's the one that, that, that springs to mind uh, mainly, um, which I, I find odd because um, they don't provide any shelter. Um, they get lots of charitable donations, but I'm not aware of them providing any shelter, but they criticise those of us who do provide shelter and accommodation, and we provide homes. So that woman has a problem with shelter, mm. which I think is actually very brave of her to platform. I mean, who, uh, who doesn't have a problem with shelter? Me, personally. <laughs> Why? I think advocating for safer housing and advocating for the housing of homeless people was actually a positive thing. That's a pretty fringe position in modern Britain, isn't it? <laughs> that would be a reform UK. Yeah. Thing. Abolishing shelter. <laughs> big shelter, big Sharia. <laughs> um, so because shelter have, have never been seen to provide anyone with shelter. <laughs> and they advocate for like, higher standards for mm. private for housing in the well both the social and the private sector they are they're giving landlords it was the thing you know the thing about the critic but the critic isn't in the ring yeah <laughs> the man in the ring the, is the man the, in the arena the man in the arena it's not the critic who counts yeah uh -huh. that, that's that's their attitude to shelter is the, <laughs> is the, is the theodore roosevelt approach <laughs> you you're not providing six people with a single bedroom <laughs> in a former council flat so shut the fuck up you've not arbitrarily put the rent up <laughs> I only put it up by 25% the market dictates it the invisible hand provides <laughs> um, I the thing that I find striking about a lot of these people is they genuinely think they're providing like a public service they think they're like the housing provider I don't think they do well they just actually well, one of them describes themselves as a housing provider I don't think they do think that I think they know that's what they should say. Really? One guy, do we have this clip? If we don't, that'd be great. Well, I'll just, I'll just repeat it anyway. Yeah, go on. But um, one guy said, we should stop calling ourselves landlords and start referring to ourselves as housing providers. That's what we do. And I asked him previously, How, why did you get into being a landlord? And he said, oh, it's a good way to make money and to get, kind of give back. He's like, there's, make a social impact as well. I was like, oh, is that what you got into? And he's like... No, I must admit it was the income. <laughs> but they know they know they should say yeah. to tackle the housing crisis. We mm. provide people with homes. Yeah. But they're but they're creaming be it. Benefit benefiting from the housing crisis, if anything. Just extracting rent. Uh -huh. Just putting your rent up arbitrarily. It's just wealth redistribution in the wrong direction. And for that reason I will never support it. Never. Never. Rent seeking. No, look, I uh, I'm fine with there being like a limited private rental sector, right? Like mm -hmm. there, there is there is some need for it. Yeah, it's the it's the scale of it in our in our house, the makeup of our housing sector that's the ginormous problem, and and the destruction of of social housing, right? There was one guy who he was getting out. He was planning to sell his private properties and get into social housing. He was going to get into social housing. <laughs> presumably, presumably, there's like a tender from, from a council 
from someone that you provide social housing oh, to. Oh, I see. He, so he said the yields are much are much more stable yeah, yeah, yeah. in social housing. So he's like, I'm just going to do that instead. Yeah. And I think I think they the council have to like they have to do some shit for you as well to like spec it out or something. I can't remember. But that seemed, but, he, but then he, he didn't want to say that on camera because he was like, "It's too good an idea. I don't want other people to nick it." Sorry, he said <laughs> it's, <laughs> he didn't want other people to hear about the golden goose. Uh. It's easy. You buy six houses. <laughs> easy. You simply become and then a you re- social housing provider. And, and then you, you sign a tender contract with the, the council to provide temporary accommodation to people and you just fucking cream money. You, you re- cream. Oh, if it, was, if it was that easy, if it was that, oh, uh, just, God, the only thing stopping me from doing that was the fucking money to buy six houses, you flying <laughs> cunt. Just get, getting spunking money. Yeah. Uh, I just, mean, they just, do. Just simply have the money to buy multiple properties. We made a... Um, we made a piece about temporary temporary accommodation uh, the other week, and when you're done watching Robbie Williams and then Extreme Britain, watch this. No, no, watch this first. Before I'll build Robbie up Williams. to the best yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> I interviewed Vicky Spratt in that because we were talking about temporary accommodation, and she said it's co- like, the most recent figures I think were that it's cost council seventeen billion pounds last year. Fuck no, in temporary accommodation. So my man is getting on the fucking holy shit, getting the on the train. train. Yeah, big time. That's also as well. It's like a recognition of a crisis, and instead of thinking, <laughs> "How oh, can we I build help? some homes?" How can I help? It's ho oh, ho, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I spy an opportunity for me to send my ten snivelling children <laughs> there. There was also as well one one man said, "He's like, I'm not a big landlord. You might you might want to speak to some of the more properties." It's like, how many properties do you have? Nine. That's tons. <laughs> You got nine houses. What are you talking about? What is, what is a lot then for them? Like hundreds. I think being like, yeah. Oh, the, the, there was a guy who whose ambition is to buy fifty houses. He's two at the moment. He, Shoot for the moon. He rents himself. He rents um, somewhere in London. Oh, he's arbitraging. And then he rent. He owns a property in Yorkshire and one in Portsmouth. Okay. Just a real rent guy. Loves it. Wouldn't call him a rent boy. He's a big... <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that either. <laughs> he is so appreciative of the rentier market <laughs> and the economy, the landlord economy. <laughs> he wants to be at both ends. <laughs> he, wants to be, he wants to be the guy at the front and the back of the human centipede. <laughs> and you're in the middle. I'm in the middle. I, well, I'm kind of behind him, I guess, because he's a landlord. <laughs> And I'm tipping up the shit in my mouth. Do you want to listen to another clip? Yeah. <laughs> Lots of people are talking about challenges within the industry, like the introduction of the rent reform bill or the ab- abolition of Section 21. How do you feel about things like that? I think that, uh, funnily enough, from what I've heard at the event today, I think I agree with the, um, the, the speakers who said that uh, let's hope that the Tories get the Rental Reform Act done ASAP because... If they lose the election and it's left to Labour, we reckon it'll be a lot harder on us. <laughs> so there we go. But I, I think that... Uh, uh, I, I don't think it's uh, that much of an issue. Um, and uh, I think that what gives tenants better protection is not a bad thing. That landlord with an interesting take on the Renters' Reform Bill. Yes, he was quite... It was quite funny. There was quite, there was quite a few people... There was, there was an interesting balance between people who are in absolute despair, like this is the end of the industry, I'm getting out of this. We're being vilified, stigmatised, attacked by this social, con-socialist government. None of them actually said con-socialist. It must be said. Do you think there are many reform voters there? I think that is their demographic, but I would... Potentially, actually, yeah. Because if it's... If they've been turned off by the Tories for being too friendly to renters, i tell you what, I would love to see reforms <laughs> housing policy... <laughs> What do you mean? Was it not on the website? I, I skimmed through it to get ah, to the good stuff about yeah. the World Economic Forum, to be mm-hmm. honest. Um, that's, that's a good idea, actually, though. On that policy document, Command F, Sharia I, Law. <laughs> housing. The World Economic Forum, housing, yeah. But there were people, and then other people were kind of laughing at, at the people for panicking and being like, well, you were just greedy. If you were more sensible with your money, when, the, when, the, when it was, they're like, landlords aren't losing money, they're just making less money than they used to. Ah. In like the crazy... 90s before more regulations more regulations have come in and you can't fucking handle the heat brother that's basically what they were saying mm. one guy compared it to 
if someone goes and works tax free in a country in the Middle East and then gets kidnapped, you're like, well, it's your own fault. <laughs> <laughs> That was his assessment. <laughs> that was his assessment. Victim oh, blaming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that was interesting. This guy, but yeah, it does, it's it's good for tenants to have stronger rights. Is it like going to the Middle East and being kidnapped? If you are a landlord, do people get kidnapped in the Middle East? I think they must do. I mean, I, 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 my, no, my look, I accept there's a baseline of kidnapping that happens everywhere in the world. I'm not saying, <laughs> I'm not saying that th there's no kidnapping there. My friend works in insurance, and her insurance, like the department she works in, is like kidnapping insurance. I know a guy who used to do that. Oh, yeah, that's the firm, possibly. But, but the if you are so significantly wealthy, you can take out insurance on yourself. Yeah, if you're kidnapped, mm -hmm. and then you the pays pays the ransom. But then would you would you not? I think there'd be like a Batman kind of <laughs> scam going on. You stage a kidnapping. <laughs> oh no, I've been kidnapped. <laughs> and the ransom, two months rent, prick. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think of the, the good landlord? There's no such thing. No that's, such thing? An, that's an oxymoron. Sympathetic landlord. Fine. Yeah. Who's your, what's, what's your worst landlord story? Um, you personally. My first landlord in London um, tried to do us for a thousand pounds of our deposit because one of the blinds was broken. And uh, what you don't know is that was a. Th <laughs> that was like it was a literally. Versace it blind. was no, 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 no. It was like a piece of shit. Um, <laughs> and I had to go to the ombudsman. The, uh, the ombudsman. I did. I invoked the ombudsman. <laughs> <laughs> I drew the stone what? circle. <laughs> what a the, medieval my champion thing. of the red wall. What a medieval. Arrived. Um yeah, I had to do, do the whole evidence thing. She she said I want all I'm taking all of your deposit and we were like, get fucked. We'll pay you 100 quid. She said no. We went to the ombudsman and the ombudsman was like, you must pay her 99 pounds 50 pence. And so I said to my flatmate at the time, I think we should post her the money in pennies in a letter. And he said no. Um, I think weight wise that would be an insane you know when they, <laughs> you it's a lot on the, yeah on the postage yeah no I'd probably just go and like push them through the door or something mm -hmm. but yeah that was that was bad oh she she tried to impose um, like spot checks on the house oh insane like um, she just texted me like, I'm going to come around and check that the place that's is tidy quite, that's not quite an enjoyment no of your, yeah, we check like, the place no. is tidy yeah 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 what the fuck was, it, was this when you were a student no right I was a young professional so we actually, we bought a camera to install in the flat because we thought she was just going in there when we weren't there. Um, <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> just a level of paranoia. <laughs> but we could never be bothered to plug it in. So we just... <laughs> so we just, we stuck it like <laughs> di directly in front of the door so that like if you actually opened it, you would see it and then be like, oh, fuck. <laughs> also, the thing in a yeah. film where someone's like, it's like four lines are like shake your head to avoid the CCTV. Yeah. Um, did I have anything bad at uni? Yeah. Uh, at uni, my room stank, like stank. So bad. So bad. Um, and I thought there was like some kind of problem with the drain in the bathroom. Mm hmm. And I guess by way of proxy, there was a problem with the drain, but it was just that instead of putting our bins out, we'd formed a mountain of bin bags in our back garden, which were on top of a waste drain in the garden. Oh, and it was the gross. smell of the bins traveling up the drain pipe. <laughs> okay. Well, that's on you. Yeah. I don't think bathroom. we can blame your no, landlord no, no, for absolutely that. No, absolutely can't blame the landlord for that. That's so gross. Yeah, it was horrific. And I spent months trying to figure out what the fuck was wrong. <laughs> like buying like dehumidifiers, <laughs> like thinking damp, it was riddled with damp. But no, it was just the bins. When I was at uni, there was four of us living in a flat and they only gave us like one tiny fridge. So we bought another like equally tiny fridge, but there was one between two basically. But you doubled your fridge capacity. Double yeah. fridge capacity. So me and my friend were sharing one fridge and it was like, why isn't this fucking working? Like the milk was going sour, like meat was going off like almost immediately. Like, this is absolutely insane. My family's girlfriend came around and after like six weeks of this happening, she's like, it's not plugged in. <laughs> because it was Edinburgh, stuff was cold. Like our flat was just cold. <laughs> so you take something out and it, it, the milk would be cold but sour. Yeah. But not, in hindsight, not fridge cold. <laughs> 
<laughs> but that also wasn't the landlord's fault. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Have you ever been treated poorly by a landlord? In my first flat in London. I wouldn't like your origin story. Like, why have you become the bane of landlords? They must have wronged you in some way. Oh, this, this guy, he, you know when we asked to get, we'd asked to get something fixed. I think it was like the, maybe the toilet broke or something like that. And they was like, oh yeah, someone will be around at four. It, and no one came at four. No one came till eight. And it, the guy didn't seem to be a professional plumber. <laughs> I was like, what the, I was like, you're supposed to be here four hours ago. He was like, I'm at work. I was at work. I was like, <laughs> What are you talking about? <laughs> Aren't you a professional plumber? And then one, like, towards the end of that contract, that contract was, like, from September till the following September. We weren't renewing it. Renewing it. And this was during COVID time as well. We, I was knocking the door. I'm going to say, like, beginning of August? And just an old lady standing there. She went, hi, I'm landlord's mother. And I went, hello. And <laughs> she said, would it be okay for me, my... Me and my grandson to come and pick the plums and the tree in the garden, and I, and I, I think I agreed then because I was like stunned by old lady appearing yeah, yeah, and then yeah. asking something. Then he followed up on text to confirm that. Bearing in mind he'd been like not terribly. If he'd been nicer to us, we, I'd have been we'd maybe been more accepting to his mother coming yeah. to hosting his mother and his son and presumably for a plum picking <laughs> day to harvest your plums to yeah. harvest the plums. But then I said, I, he said, when can my mother come around? And I said, hi, hi, landlord. We're quite, well, no, basically, we're quite uncomfortable because it's COVID times with yeah. people coming in. Maybe you could do it when we move out. We move out in like the 31st of August. Yeah. Maybe you could do it then. And he replies, the plums will be rotten by then. <laughs> It's like, as, as far as I'm concerned, I'm paying you. They're my plums. <laughs> <laughs> she can't have any of these bastard plums. That I'm letting spoil <laughs> on the garden. You should have picked them and fucking like done, but binned them. Uh, they, they just wouldn't do it. They just fell off the tree and rotted. Yeah. Fuck them. Are you pleased with that? Yeah, 100%. That's wasteful, Ed. I don't care. You also will have created an environment that's ideal for pests. I think or plague I, I also, the plum tree. I also don't care about that. Well, you should. Well, if he wanted the plums, he should have not let out the flat. If I'd known you had a plum glut, I would have come around and taken them for myself. <laughs> I don't think we knew each other at that point. Oh, no, we did. We didn't know each other. Well, then it's inexcusable. <laughs> <laughs> we should know this. I've not spoken to Ollie Dugmore in about nine months. <laughs> Got plums, brother. <laughs> Can I have a job? Yeah. If, actually, that's a good tip. If you want a job at Politics Joe, just say you've a bounty of fruit. <laughs> <laughs> say you've got an allotment and surplus fruit and all it will be over to make a pie <laughs> at your residence. You appear wherever there's stoned fruit to be had. That's, that's one way of getting a job. Mm -hmm. what, what other ones? Well, someone's fucking made a job application in the subreddit. Yeah, that was sick, to be fair. Were you impressed by it? Yeah, it was really good. It's really funny. Well done, that guy. Did, what, were you impressed by it? I was impressed by it, yeah. He's c clearly familiar with the back catalogue. Oh, it meant, how, like, how many episodes do you think were in that? Most. A lot. Yeah, tons. And like real deep cuts as well. Yeah. Good on that guy. Should have fight a final clip from the landlord. Yeah, go on then, sorry. There's housing crisis in the country at the moment, and a lot of tenants are going to face in the brunt of that as a cost for the landlord rise. Yeah, the tent rent increases um, and people's wages aren't necessarily going up. Do you do you have empathy for tenants in that situation? Yeah, I do. And I think also that landlords are getting the short end of the stick there a lot because quite honestly, we're trying to make more units available. That's what we do. You know, we don't we don't just make money. We try and provide nice homes for people and we try to provide more homes for people. There's a uh, there are a lot of government initiatives which we're following now to help get more properties available to tenants. So um, so yes, of course, because, you know, they're in a real life situation and they maybe have uh, difficulty in paying the rent and all that sort of stuff. You know, it's a recession. Everybody's got their difficulties as well. So, uh, you know, and landlords, there are a lot of landlords now who are losing money every month. And, and nobody ever talks about them. Not uh, Obviously, you know, everyone assumes they're rich, don't they? Oh, no, they're the 1%. No, they're not. And, you know, they're just regular people who uh, foolishly bought a house when interest rates were low without doing any research. <laughs> now, I'm in a network of really professional landlords, and there's quite a few of us, in fact, quite a lot of females. Um, and I know that a lot of them feel in despair at the minute because um, you know their costs have gone up their mortgage and finance costs have gone up not every landlord has um, a mortgage but most people do 
And so I think that um, a lot of industry spokespeople who don't necessarily understand the dynamics of the market think that landlords are just money grabbing. But as um, tenants are feeling the squeeze, so are landlords. And the problem is because it's a business situation, if your cost base is higher than your level of income, so for landlords, they're not getting the rent to cover their increased mortgage costs, it means that they're going to go bust. And so ultimately, that tenant is going to be out of the home and they're going to be um, homeless. So it is a very difficult situation. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure the amount of regulation there is is necessary. Are landlords just money grabbers? To the extent that in every... No, life, they people... also grab plums. <laughs> I've said <like>, plum hogs. <laughs> I'm going to the Plum Hog <laughs> Association next week. Two plums and a hog. Yeah. Um, plum and hog. The Plum and Hog would be a good um, pub name. The Plum and Hog? Yeah, yeah. I'd go there. Mm. Hog and Plum? Yeah. Hog and Bum? <laughs> Stop it. Hog and Bum. Um, I think, they, they are, are are landlords unfairly stigmatised in this in this country? No. No, I don't think so either. <laughs> No, I genuinely, and I, I, um, I, 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 I've said it a few times in, um, I, I said it on the BBC and I had loads of people tweeting me being like, you know, what about the fucking landlords? Yada, yada, yada. I fuck them. That like, genuinely fuck them. Like, I, I, I think <coughs> that if, all things being equal, if everything was all right in our society, I would be like, okay, fine. There can be some. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Some people need short term flexible housing. Yep. They fulfill a role in the market. Our housing market is now so overcooked, so overheated. We have such a shortage of affordable homes for people to buy. We have a complete shortage of social housing for people to live in at a low rent that they pay to a council. That I'm, I'm, I'm done with the boo, boohoo, woe is me. I can afford to own multiple houses. Mm -hmm. and also, like, fuck them. Also, as well, they talk about or losing money. Because people are saying, oh, they're not making any money. This month. They're, they're guessing the value of the asset. Yeah, increasing. They're paying off a mortgage. Yeah. I'm sorry if that's if that's your only job. Get a, simply get another job, friend. Rent, rent seeking. Yeah, hundred percent. Simple as that. Creating nothing of value. The the, the woman in that clip, it was quite a funny moment. Which she's talking about in the video. She's talking about um, I'm part of this network of very professional landlords, many of whom are women. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, it's okay. They're feminists. <laughs> it is an honour <laughs> to actually. My landlord is a woman, and it is, it is an honour. Do you know what I do? I make I work out the what a man would be paid, <laughs> and top it up. <laughs> did you um? Did you wish your landlady a, a happy International <laughs> Women's Day? We had a round for dinner. <laughs> Wait, I let her sleep in my bed. You are an inspiration, sister. Yeah, I think, I think that, thank you, sister. I think it's so funny to be like, it's just like completely vacuous representation politics, isn't it? <laughs> just being like, bad thing. Woman? <laughs> <laughs> I like to, you know, there's that um, day of the year that you reach where it's like, um, from now on, you know, all these men can 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 stop working and they would be paid the same as what women will get oh, for yeah, the yeah. whole year. You should let her live in your house for those <laughs> days. <laughs> uh, I've become homeless. Yeah. I paid I'm actually I actually pay double because um I pay double rent because it makes me grind more. Mm. I said I offered to pay double the asking price. Some of the some of the easiest ways to um Achieve grind set. Tip your landlord. Yep. <laughs> Buy more uncles. <laughs> Shit yourself. Shit yourself. Yep. Achieve grind set. Grind set. Because then you can afford money for, or you can go to, you can be like the middle's fan and have a wad of cash used to wipe your arse. Mm. Exactly. Do you think he was the landlord and that's why he had so much cash? Quite possibly, yeah. And they went, or a drug dealer. Or a drug dealer. One or the other. If you're a landlord, Middlesbrough would be quite a good place to be a landlord. Yeah, I imagine there's... Uh, Cheap property. I imagine there's good yields on that, yeah. 100%. You've been imbibing. You've been drinking the Landlord Convention Kool-Aid. <laughs> I'm going in next time. <laughs> <laughs> we got in last time. Do you remember? First time we went in. in yeah. I could have gone in this time, just probably not with the camera. Yeah. Um, there was also quite a few people, one guy just misinterpreted what we were doing, didn't realise we were journalists, thought we were landlord-specific social media. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> like, so you just make like all the assets. And like, oh, for us, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which was great. Nice. Is that us? I think so. I think that's it. Ed, it's been a pleasure. Ollie, Ava. Do you know what? Do actually know? Do you know what would be fine? We could have Ava's medium, and we could still talk to her. Yeah, we could, <laughs> couldn't we? We could. Are you going to do an Ava impression? No, absolutely not. No, neither. I wouldn't dare. No. It's kind of like when someone dies, but you leave like a place for them at the Christmas dinner table. Yeah, it's quite weird. I don't really like it. Should we leave it there? Yeah. I a see. moment silence for Ava doing other work. Yeah, I think we should leave it there. Sick. Um. Yeah, I guess. Go and check out that guy's video in the um, in the subway. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, check out that guy. One for the heads. Um, see you all on the next one. Goodbye. Bye.